Hello, dear fish keeper, aquarist, and those that want to learn something more about fish diseases. Today I will present something different. As you know, I usually present something about fish diseases related to fish food or what fish food can help you. Lately, I've been giving a lot of fish disease cases, the ones I studied during my work as a fish doctor. But what I do as a fish doctor is also uh, reading about new publications, studies done on, on fish diseases and what people do to cure the fish. And that is due to my work by looking uh, and searching on the internet what publications have been brought forward. So today I will show you one of the first ones I can want to show with you. It's not a very recent one. It's about one and a half years old from an old student of mine, um, Pedro Cardoso, which is a, a veterinary which I trained in Sao Paulo some four or five years ago in the, in the way of how to look at face diseases, how to examine in a practical way and an easy way to help a, a fish importer, exporter, and how he's become a, a, a fish specialist and uh, studying face diseases and writing good publications. So I will show you today his publication and I will highlight the, the findings he publishes in there that can help you in in understanding fish diseases and solving some problems. And this today is about a, a parasitic infection in marine fish, about neobinodenia. So I'll show you uh, my my screen that I'll show you the, the text which is laying here in front of me. So the neobinodenia uh, can be found in reef ornamental fish pieces and they were studied at a retailer in southern eastern Brazil. I Presumably it was Sao Paulo. And the possible role of a mechanical factor of bacterial infection, that means that they also can cause bacterial infection. So I highlighted here in yellow what I particularly want to show to you uh, from this study. Wild fish frequently carry pathogens, which could induce diseases after the stress of capture. And neobinodinia is a platelmint. Well, it's a, a, mono, a monogenetic kind of trematode. It's a platelmint that mainly attaches to the skin and the, eye, and the eyes of the fish. It provokes dermal inflammation, epidermal loss, skin depigmentation, and reduction in the number of the mucus cells, and consequently, decreased mucus production and declining immunological barriers. Of course, that's a risk of getting other infections after this worm infection, the skin fluke, we can call it also. This is part of the abstract. The monogenium agent here, the specimen, was collected from the eye of each of the 40 fish analyzed to evaluate possible bacterial secondary infections. But a total of 47 fish were examined and on 40 of them, they found these kind of worms, these kind of flukes. And then they used the Multitoff MS identified method that 50% from 59% of the monogenia collected from the eye had bacteria, and including some are pathogenic to the fish. And this led to belief that the ectoparasite can be possibly a mechanical vector of pathogenic bacteria for fish culture and maintenance. And they discuss also the use of prasicantel as an antiparasitic agent in the treatment. So this is about the abstract which are going to give you the most highlighted points, which I think is important for us uh, and when we, when we deal with ornamental fish. Because when we deal with ornamental fish, we deal with diseases. And this particular case on a marine fish is some parasitic infection which seems to become more common than it was five, six years ago. Why? Because of lack of quarantine, because of the crowding of fish, uh, the stress involved. So I, I will discuss further 
the results which are presented here in in this uh, in this uh, paper um well many fish of course marine fish are uh, dealt in in industry and we find out that uh, stressful environments just as high stocking density poor sanitary conditions low water quality biofouling uh, transport stress and thermal stress can lead to an animal to the animal's immunological uh, suppression that means weakening of the resistance of uh, infections so the fish become more prone to get infectious and this can act as a predisposing factor for secondary infections and particularly we will talk about bacteria here the parasites has a direct life cycle and is an oviparous hermaphrodite that can produce by self-fertilization. So they don't need male, female. They don't need eggs. They just are, are oviparous. It just the, the eggs are born directly from from the the, the 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 fluke or the worm. So they don't need a host. They don't need eggs in in to get the stages. So in other words, one single uh, neobenedinia can lay eggs and then disseminate the parasite to other fish. So it's easy to create infection in, in, a, in a community aquarium, an inch aquarium. So I'll go further on. And here I show you some of the, the pictures which were presented in the article. Uh, you can see here uh, the worms in the eye. Here the cloudy eyes, which is uh, the cloudy spot on the door. So here another picture of the neobenedinia fluke on the eye and here's another one here we see the patches on the sea here and that sea also has uh, of course a, a risk of uh, showing uh, the, the parasites here also in the eye here also in the eye the blue tang and here the zebra zoma the yellow tang also has some flukes or neobenedinia and when we go further in the details here are the list of fish where they found all the flukes on. Let's see, there are 40 different fish. And what was obvious here that the, the yellow tank had about, uh, well, let's see, break it a little bit smaller, had about an average of 10 flukes or neobenedinia of the body. And, and the blue griddled angelfish, Pomacanthus nervarcus, about 20 neobenedinia. And here the other angelfish, the, the asphor, had about also 20. So there's quite a few worm infections were going on in that system there. So in the discussion here, I will close up here this, this presentation that in that shop, the, the first clinical manifestations appeared in the angelfish, the Pomacantidae family, and many displayed eye and fin opacity signals. And this situation was observed in the Navarcus and the Asfo, which presented opaque eyes and fins and higher mean intensity value. The opacity is caused by damage and inflammation in the epidermis induced by the heptor. That means the hooks or the fixation structure of that fluke, that worm, together with the parasite overlapping in the tissue and infection by opportunistic bacteria. And the bacteria they found were Acinetobacter johnstoni and they found a kind of Pseudomonas patida and then Vibrio species. And those are known in the literature that they are pathogenic to marine fish and might have a high lethality rate. And here we see that oh, high magnification of that neobenedinia. And here we see it at five millimeter size, how big it can be. And here we see that heptor at the right here. You see the hooks. That is causing, of course, the lesions. Well, there, uh, therefore, uh, eliminating the monogenians, which it is a monogenian, which causes damage to the tegument of the animals, at the receipt of the fish, that means when the fish are imported, is a control of action to prevent infection, dispersal, and losses due to opportunistic bacterial infections. So the things you have to do when you import fish you have to take actions to clean off those neobenedinia, these flukes. Imported fish are often weakened and have a low immune system 
which can lead to the disease and the death. So you have to strengthen also those fish because they are weakly because of the transport, the handling, the unpacking, the acclimation. Well, yes, you know, we, we recommend for that or Dr. Basley a biofish food to help the fish. But also here in this case, a treatment is necessary to eliminate the risk of these flukes. And there are several options for a treatment. When you see this uh, parasites appear, and they find out that the bath with Brazicantel and a dip, freshwater dipping, just showed high efficacy against adult worms with few side effects and large safety. This, um, uh, that was the conclusion of the author, of course, here, that on the results, they concluded that uh, feces can be affected from the wild and they can arrive in the retailer. And the monogenians or the neobinoderi can carry also pathogenetic bacteria. You know, the acetinobacter, the pseudomonas, the vibrios, which can contribute to secondary bacterial infections due to injuries caused by the parasites, hooks or hepter, and the role as a mechanical vector. These results emphasize the importance of quarantine, early diagnosis and treatment to control and prevent diseases and death in aquatic animals. Further studies can be seen here. Further studies have been done. Sorry, these are recent studies that the author used. And further studies can be done to understand more about this problem. So uh, this is the article I wanted to share with you. You can review it and look for the reference. I put it also in my link below where you can find this article back uh, by when you start looking on the internet. So I hope this kind of presentation I give you in this uh, short YouTube video on a fish disease study might help you. And I will give you some more in the near future. So stay tuned uh, to my channel, subscribe, and you might see more uh, studies presented uh, by my work uh, on uh, my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.